How's it going guys? It's Cole from See Through Panel. Wanted to do a quick review here of two things I just read recently. I read them each in a sitting, a piece. Um, they're both very fast. Uh, one is King of Spies by Mark Miller with art by Mateo Scalera from Image. Ghost Cage uh, written by Nick Dragata and Caleb Golner with art by Nick Dragata, also published by Image. So um, these two I think are, they're pretty recent both of them uh, to be collected at least. And I read them both very close to each other, and I ended up feeling kind of similarly about both of them. So I'll be going through that, but I will say this will also be a bit closer to an actual review than my typical video. I like to do overviews, talk about the book itself, and not really get into spoiler territory here. I'm going to still try and avoid spoilers, but I'm going to be flipping through the book as usual. And I'm going to be just kind of giving my opinion on the, uh, the narrative and the art. So... This is written, as I said, by Mark Miller, art is by, art is by uh, Matteo Scalera, colors by Giovanna Nero, and letters by Clem Robbins. And the first thing I noticed when I looked at the art in this is that the color palette is a bit more muted than I'm used to seeing on Scalera. Normally, um, I saw him in Black Science a lot, and um, very bright colors. It's, it's a sci-fi story, so pretty normal that there'd be a lot uh, more of a vivid color palette, but... Here it's very muted. I think it does work well. I think Nero complements him very well here. His work has a lot of texture and is just, as always, very, very nice to look at throughout the book. Hopefully you can see what I mean when I say texture here because there's a lot of it going on. One of my favorite panels here is how he uses diagonal lines like that to make shadows throughout the entire panel. More texture there in the background. Um, and this is written by Mark Miller, who I'm sure a lot of people know. Uh, he's got a deal with Netflix, which shows up on the book. Um, he's kind of infamous for writing for TV or movies at this point, which I'm sure is a great business decision for him, but it doesn't always translate into good comics. Here, this is pretty much, um, I would say, typical Miller with maybe a little more on the higher quality side. Um, it's just an action-packed adventure, like typical Miller, but um, a little bit elevated, I think, by Scalera's art. The problem with me is a problem I have often with Miller is that he just will not let there be subtext. He, um, if there's something that you've picked up on and you feel you're engaging with the story, um, it's clever, you feeling a little clever yourself for picking up on it, Next page, he will put it in a word balloon and tell it to you directly. And I find that to be a huge problem with him. There also is no nudity on this page, but there is nudity in the book, so I'm going to be careful about not showing the uh, final issue there. Four-issue series, I should have said earlier. Um, it's a basically a retired James Bond analog who realizes he has six months to live. They, they say it pretty eloquently at the back. And now he's going to go after using his resources and his knowledge from his career, go after the people that are truly evil in the world. Not supervillains or terrorists or anything, but corrupt politicians, um, corrupt religious figures, film directors, bankers, people that are just morally corrupt and misuse their power. So that's basically, it's basically justice porn. Um, which is satisfying to read at times, but I really found that he... Um, it's just a bit too exposition-y. Not even, not even exposition-y, because I'll get into that, but Ghost Cage was exposition-y. This was just um, surface level. There's not a lot of depth to what he's trying to say here. And I found that to be not necessarily a problem, but just not... doesn't let me engage with the story in the way that I want it to. Um, I did enjoy it. I definitely enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun... Fun story, um, you know, there's there's sex, there's action, there's drama, there's family drama, there's, I mean, a lot going on, and a, a nice cast of characters. Um, I just don't think that the writing was up to snuff compared to the art, which, to be fair, I don't know of a lot of writers that can match the level of Matteo Scalera. Miller, he always gets the best artists um, because of his, you know status as a creator, but I just don't think that the narrative really matches the art here. Um, it's just too 
as I said, just too surfacey for me. Um, but I definitely found it to be enjoyable. It's an action film. Like, I shouldn't be looking too deeply into it. It's basically just an action flick that you throw on the TV while you cook or while you, you know, are doing the laundry or whatever you need to do. It's It's... Nothing that, like, you could leave for five minutes. The kind of movie you could leave, walk out of the room, come back five minutes later, you're not missing anything. You probably just missed some action scene or nothing that's going to hamper your ability to, to enjoy the story. Um, what little story there is. And the thing with Miller is he just likes to be cool. And the story's cool. The characters are cool. Um, Over-the-top action hero stuff that just... I mean, I think the first page has him, yeah, jumping off a building. Um, and I guess just, like, landing? Yeah, landing on an ambulance and then just getting up. So it's definitely over-the-top action hero stuff. Um, I've probably gone on a little bit too long. But, uh, yeah, I want to say the same thing over and over again. It was fun. I enjoyed it. It was a satisfying read. Um, obviously, you don't go into a Miller book looking for a ton of uh, heavy themes and um, philosophical, uh, uh, writing here, so. The thing for me that links these two is that they both had great art, and they both, uh, just had less than great writing, so Ghost Cage, as I said, co-written by Nick Dragata and Caleb Golner, published by Image, art by Nick Dragata, whose art you probably have seen in East of West, um, it's in a black and white manga influenced style, but it's a style all his own, and I think it's really, really awesome. The art is just wonderful. But the problem was that this, I read this second after King of Spies, so I got to the first issue here, read through it, very engaged, very compelling. It had some uh, things that I thought would be very thematically cool and would, would make a lot of sense. I thought it was going to say a lot. Well. Let me save that. It's about um, a tower that has these layered fuel sources, nuclear, wind, gas, hydro, coal. Um, and we have our new type of energy, whose name is Sam, who's like basically the the uh, the evolution of energy. He's going through the tower, each, level, each layer of the tower, and defeating the being that is in there. So it's basically hydro power personified or coal power personified. Um, into this just giant, you know, very manga style. There, there's Cole. So uh, it's a fight comic. It's a manga style fight comic, and it it works well in that way. The thing was that when we started getting into these energy sources and you know um, environmental impact and things, I was expecting those to be heavy themes. When really it's it's more of an action packed fight comic with. Um, the characters kind of take over the story, whereas I thought it would be kind of uh, a bit heavier. It was not so much. Really nice design, really nice art. And the art is consistently great throughout. I'm sure you've seen that if you've read East of West. It's a very, very similar facial structure that he uses. Uh, my problem with this was just, yeah, a bit exposition-y. There would be things in the word balloons that I didn't see appearing in the art and were not reflected in it, and just kind of confusing because it is a it is written and drawn by Dragata, so I would think he would show and not tell. But I think it is his first um, time writing his own book, so I'm not going to... That's a very nice-looking vertical panel there. I would never say it's bad, because it, it's he's not a writer by trade, he's an artist, and he's just trying his hand on writing, and he, this, he does a passable job. It's just not um, what I was looking for towards the end. I think the first issue hits just right, um, it introduces a lot of concepts that I really enjoy, it's, gets a good pace set, we're just rocketing into the second issue, and by the third and final issue, I thought we had dropped the ball and kind of started uh wow that's very nice the speed lines are awesome on that i thought we had kind of dropped all of the themes that i really was enjoying and just kind of gone bare bones into the fight comic and these characters that were uh 
bouncing off of each other in a fun way, but I didn't think a lot of it was earned. I think there's some characters in here that, um, like this character here, doesn't really earn his time on the page and just is kind of shoehorned in his relationship with our main characters, a bit shoehorned. And um, overall, I would say as a first time writing successful comic, it was really fun. It was really great to see him branch out in this way. Um, but I don't really think it worked entirely for me on the writing side. I'm not sure what um, Caleb Golner contributed. I don't know if he's doing dialogue or if he just helped um, kind of develop the ideas. But for me, it's all art over the writing here, I would say. Very expressive. Great use of speed lines. Like I said, it's got a heavy manga influence style. Yeah, so both of these kind of very similarly. Really, really nice to look at. Um, they both start strong. I think King of Spies starts not as strong as Ghost Cage, but finishes stronger, whereas Ghost Cage fell off a little bit for me. It just hit, it hit just right at the beginning and just fell off, whereas King of Spies... It was consistently what it was the entire way through. Um, I think if they would have kept the tone of issue one throughout entirely, all three issues of Ghost Cage, I would have liked it a bit more. I just wasn't really satisfied with how things turned out. And by that time I was, you know, three quarters through, I looked at how many pages I had left and knew that it just wasn't going to, it wasn't going to end cleanly like I thought it was going to, so... I definitely enjoyed both these works, and I would recommend them to specific people who enjoy specific things, but just to someone on the street, to someone I don't know their taste, probably not the strongest recommendations for me. I'm definitely going to be keeping both the books because they're so nice to look at, and I do respect the creators of both of them a ton. Um, yeah, I, let me know what you guys thought, because I know a lot more people have eyes on Miller's stuff than Dragata's stuff, but I know from what I read online... Um, a lot of people who read this really enjoyed it, so I'm I'm probably in the minority here. Um, I'm glad a lot of people enjoyed it. I wish I enjoyed it as much as they did, but if you read either of these, let me know how you thought they uh, turned out, because they're passable for me. I would give them both probably like a 6 or a 7 out of 10. I don't really do ratings here, but that's kind of my thoughts on it. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate you guys watching. Let me know what you thought about these. Thanks, guys. Peace.